I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Happy first week back at school for a lot of us. I hope you've all been doing well and are adjusting well to the new school year ahead of us. Uh, let's just take this time to um, pray before today's service. If everyone can put their hands together, close their eyes and bow their heads, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this Sunday where we can come together as a church to worship you. Help us be attentive today and prepare our hearts to worship and to learn more about you. I pray for Pastor Ecker that you may give him the words to speak uh, for today's sermon. And through the story of Ezekiel, may we all be reminded of this new life you've given to us through Jesus Christ. And may we learn um, to obey you more and um, maybe be reminded of your great love for us. Thank you again for uh, this time of Sunday service, and please be with us uh, during the week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, Primary and Junior family, hope you guys have been doing well this week. And for most of us, if not all of us, are going back to school during a very strange and weird time. Uh, but I encourage you all, as always, to not turn to video games or uh, I guess anything else you might turn to uh, normally when you're stressed or anxious, but let's turn to God instead, the one who really understands us, the one who really uh, loves us and, looks, at, and uh, looks after us, right? For He is our Heavenly Father. So let's pray that uh, during this new semester, God will continue to reveal Himself more and more to us. And to start it off, we have a, our first song for today is Open the Eyes of My Heart. So, when you guys are ready, let's get our voices prepared, our hearts prepared, and our bodies prepared as well. <clears throat> ready, John? Ready. Okay, let's go.
my heart I want to see you I want to see you Nice Good job guys <clears throat> And the next song we'll be singing together is um, a new one I introduced a couple of weeks back called One Voice If you guys remember, feel free to sing along and if you don't remember, just look at the lyrics on <laughs> Look at the lyrics on the screen, I'm pretty sure it's there <laughs> Okay Let's start Right after I put on my capo Yeah, that's also an important song to sing because since we can't meet at church, it feels like we're very separated and fragmented all around. But in reality is, if you are a Christian, we are united through Christ. We are one family. So let's uh, remember that and hopefully that encourages you guys throughout this week. So uh, that ends off our worship session for today. Uh, good seeing you all and hopefully we can see each other soon in person. All right? Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Hope everyone is doing well, uh, especially when uh, many of you are going back to school this week or next week. And I, I've been praying actually for all of you that uh, you've had a, you will have a safe return to school and then everything will be safe, especially for those who are going to in-person classes. And then for those who are not doing in-person classes and uh, doing online, I've been praying that, uh, you know, it's a different you know way of learning, it's a different format. And so uh, just been praying that you'll get used to that and hopefully it won't, um, you know, hinder you too much from learning. Um, yeah, and so uh, just praying that, uh, that each of you will go through whichever way, either in person or online, as best as possible. And so, um, yeah, hope everyone is doing well. And uh, before we go into the sermon, let's just uh, pray.
pray. Let's put our hands together. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads and let's pray to God. And so, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this wonderful Sunday you've given us. Thank you for this past week and your faithfulness. And and uh, for those who are going to uh, who went to school this past week, and though for those who are going into school this week, we just ask that you continue to watch over them and be with them and bless them and protect them. And we also ask, oh God, that as we listen to your sermon today. Um, and your word today. Uh, speak to us, Lord, and help us to understand. Help us to see that you are a God who brings, uh, you know, dead people to life and what that looks like and what that means. And so, God, help us to put our hope in you and to see that you are the only one that can bring dead people to life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. And so today's passage is a little long. Uh, we are going to go to Ezekiel chapter 37, verses uh, 1 to 14, I believe. So Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. And so I'm just going to read it uh, as we go. All right. So it says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He had led me back and forth among them, and I was, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I'll put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet like a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I'll put my spirit in you and you will live and I'll settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. And that's God's word for us today. And so, you know, uh, past couple of weeks, we've been, you know, reading about Jeremiah and what's happened in Jeremiah's ministry. And as well as last week, we learned about uh, one of the kings, the last king of Judah before uh, Judah was conquered by Babylon was King Zedekiah. And uh, during his reign and during Jeremiah's ministry, God promised judgment towards the nation of Judah. And it came through. Okay, The nation of Babylon attacked and burned God's temple and tore down the city of Jerusalem. Uh, here, many of the people were killed uh, and whoever was left were taken back to Babylon as servants and slaves. All right? And as God's people, they were kicked out or exiled from their home to Babylon. And they stayed there for about 70 years before uh, new management came in through the king of Persia and, uh, and allowed them to go back. But during the 70 years, uh, this time, the people were scared. They were defeated. They were lost. They felt as if they were cut off from God because the temple was taken down and they were kicked out of their land. Um, however, they may have felt that way. But here's the thing, they were not abandoned by God, even though God judged them, because he was merciful and loving. But during this time when the people were in Babylon, God sent the prophet Ezekiel to speak to them through the visions that God gave him. All right, Visions, again, are like dreams, but 
uh, you are awake. And God spoke to Ezekiel and many other prophets like this with a vision or a voice because they did not have a verse. You know, they didn't have the the Bible at the time, the, the full Bible written down like we do today. And then God speaks through us when we read this. Um, and so one famous pastor said that by the name of J.D. Greer, where he says, you know, uh, back then they had a voice, but today we have a verse. Okay, we have a verse. Or they had a vision back then, we have a verse today. And so the vision that we are talking about today is a vision of a hope, future hope and that it will be fully completed by Jesus, all right? Um, so when we look at today's passage, God gave a vision to Ezekiel. And it was a vision of a valley filled with dry bones, okay? Dead people, okay? <laughs> and, and But not just like, you know, you don't see the gruesome part, but you see the bones, which is still gruesome. And this could be a little scary, okay? It's a little bit of a scary vision. Uh, it could be, it's sad as well. Uh, imagine walking through a cemetery and at night and bones were sticking out. Uh, it means they weren't buried properly, and it will be pretty scary. Um, you can also tell that if these, if they're, if they're bones, these people have been dead for a while. Okay, um, if you don't see like the skin and you just see the bones, and they've probably been dead for a while. And so it's because a person who just died, you, you know. Uh, you you would, you would see everything still, you know, like um, if their heart just stopped, if they died because of that, because their heart just stopped. Um, usually, you know, you're considered dead when your heart stops and the blood stops flowing. Um, and, uh, you know, but, you know, you don't see the bones yet. We don't, you know, uh, decompose or anything like that. And, uh, yet, uh, yet, or that quickly until you, you see the bones. No, uh, you still see the flesh and everything. And if we die within maybe 10 minutes before CPR is, or uh, while CPR is given or uh, and stuff like that, then we could, there's a good chance, especially when someone's heart stopped, uh, that, you know, bring them back to life. We're, like, we may have that power. We may have that ability to bring someone's back back to life after within about 10 minutes after giving CPR and defibrillator and if you don't know what that is you can just ask your parents but it's not a, you know big point but yeah uh, we have that power uh, to be able to do that if someone's heart stopped um, and to possibly bring them back to life within maybe 10 minutes right anything past that uh, it, it would be pretty difficult to bring them back and anything past even longer than that, uh, it'll be impossible. We just don't have the power to do that. And so if you don't know what CPR is, CPR is a special technique, you know, where you pump the chest and, um, and you know, breathe into someone's mouth to, you know, and get the blood flowing, the oxygen in there. Um, and it's a useful technique for all of us to learn, especially when you get a little older. And, um, but if you can learn it sooner, that's that's even better. Um, but yeah, it, you know, we may have the ability to do that, right? But what if someone had been dead for a long time and their bones are showing? Can they be brought back to life? Do we have the power to do that? Like imagine we had a mummy in here and, and you, you know, like do we have the power to bring this person that's been mummified back to life? They're just all dried up now and... No, we don't, you know, not when they're like a skeleton. No, um, we don't have that power. Um, and when we look at this vision that this kind of a scary vision, but it's a it's a vision that will turn later into a vision of hope. Um, you know, these bones represented God's people. And it means that they've been dead for a while, dead in their sins. OK, their rebelliousness against God. And they've been doing it for such a long time that they don't know anything else to do. They, they don't know how else to live. They don't even know how to follow God anymore. And, and, and in a sense, they've been dead for such a long time that it's impossible to bring them back. It's, it's as if their bones are showing. And God asks Ezekiel, can, you know, you know, basically, can these bones live? And Ezekiel responds as any one of us would if we were given a difficult question. 
or a question that we couldn't answer. And we would say, Sovereign Lord, well, only you know God. Only God knows. You know, like, I don't know. God, do you, you only you know the answer to this question. So can God do the impossible? Can he bring dead people that have been dead for a long time back to life? Um, physically, he can. Okay, physically he can. And that's something we can look forward to when Jesus returns because, uh, you know, the, a lot of people have died since, you know, Jesus, you know, ascended to heaven and, and he said he would promise to come back. And so a lot of people have died within the past 2,000 years and that believe in him. And who knows, uh, if he doesn't come within our life, lifetime, we'll be dead too. And so, um, you know, and can God bring us back to life? after we've been dead for a long time. And yes, he can. He can do the impossible. But is this what this passage is talking about? Not necessarily, no. In a sense, it's talking about can can God bring those who are dead in their sins back to life in God and give them life in that way? And then eventually, yes, life physically for eternity uh, when Jesus returns. Can God do the impossible? And the answer to that is yes. You know, only God can bring back someone that's been long dead, all right? Either physically or spiritually or whateverly. Okay, only God can do that. We can't. After 10 minutes, when someone passes, that's it. And sooner or later, we reach an age where we just can't go back, all right? And then he tells Ezekiel to speak to the bones twice, you know, when we see this. And, and it becomes less of a scary vision, and um, and it's a, and we can see this two-step process, which is very similar to how God created Adam and brought him to life in Genesis two seven, um, where God you know formed Adam out of the dust and then He breathed His life into this two-step process. First formed him and then gave him life, and likewise He told Ezekiel, "Speak to these bones." And guess what? They were formed. And guess and then He said, "Speak to them again." And, and then they had the breath of life in them, and they were as vast as an army. And w- and when we look at verse eleven and onward, God tells Ezekiel to tell this to the people of Is- Judah who are in Babylon, who are suffering, who feel cut off, who feel as if there's no future hope. And he's telling them, give them this good message that they may feel abandoned by me, but I haven't abandoned them. I have, a, I have a plan for them. I have a future plan to bring them to life again. And he has this amazing plan that God will one day bring his people back to life. And that was such an important, uh, graceful, merciful message to people who have been going through such a bad time and if, if you read on God promises as well that instead of two nations so he shows another vision to Ezekiel is where there's two sticks one representing uh, Israel the other one representing Judah and he says put them together and they become one and he says there won't be two nations anymore and there's going to be one nation and it's going to be ruled over by a descendant of David and guess who that descendant of is going to be who guess who that great 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 great, great, put a bunch of more greats in the grandchild of david who's going to rule over them going to be guess and if you guess jesus you're correct okay jesus is going to be that person and so they're in babylon and uh it's only until 70 years later that they begin to taste this future hope that God has promised because like I said there was a change of management when the king of Persia came in and took over and he said you know what people of Judah you're free to go back now you're free you're no longer slaves you're free to go back uh, and rebuild Jerusalem rebuild your temple right um and it was the beginning step of this future hope that Ezekiel talked about um and you can see the body forming okay but is there life yet, right? Well, not yet. It's the beginning, but not the end. Okay, because it is through Jesus and his life, death and resurrection, that the breath of life, you know, now is in God's people through the Holy Spirit. All those who believe in Jesus, that breath of life enters now. 
And if we already believe in Jesus and do our best to follow him, then we are alive. And even though one day we'll die, we'll come back to life. And God promises us eternal life. But I'm sure there are so many people around us that do not believe and follow Jesus. And they are like people who are like the people of Judah at the time, dead, and that their bones are showing. They've been dead for so long, dead in their sins. You know, maybe not dead physically, but dead spiritually. And is there any hope for them? And the answer is yes, there is. Because if God can bring people who have been dead in their sins for so long, he can bring anybody back. All right. <clears throat> and in order to hope that they can come back to life again, we need to first do this. We need to pray. You know, who do we go to to do the impossible if we can't do it? Well, God. God can do the impossible. God can bring dead people back to life physically and spiritually. So let's go to Him. Only God can do it. So let's, let's go to the one who can do it. So let's pray to Him. That's the first thing we need to do. Because let me tell you, if you have a family member, a friend, anybody, that doesn't believe in Jesus, that doesn't follow Jesus, then, you know, it's sad. They're dead in their sins. They're dead. And they need the breath of life. They need God. And if you want to see them saved, you need to pray for them. And ask God, can you save them? Because only God knows. We don't know, but God knows. But because we don't know, let's, let's pray. All right? Uh, second, we need to share the good news of Jesus Christ and what he did in, in his life, what he did on the cross, and that he is alive again. All right? We need to share the gospel to them, the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, if, if they haven't heard of it. All right? And if they have, it doesn't hurt to share again, you know, as we're praying for them. And then if they're interested, as we're praying and sharing, uh, we can introduce them to come to our church. And right now it's a little bit hard, but maybe we can share these, you know, videos and service videos, or maybe we can share other Christian videos that we can come across that we know are Christian videos, right? And then, and if they accept and 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 you know, then praise God, you know, that God's life is now in them, and and then it's our job to help them get plugged into church to worship, to serve, and to grow and to learn. Okay, alongside with them and let me tell you it may take time for God to work in people and it may not happen right away for the people of Judah after about 70 years it began okay and then hundreds of years later then Jesus comes right uh, it takes time um, and then even when I think about my father he wasn't a Christian for all his life yeah it wasn't until later in life he became a Christian. But I remember it took about eight years praying for him, for God to save him and bring, light, bring, bring, bring him from death to life. And um, eight years. And it happened. You know, I remember that day where my father accepted Christ and um, believed and began to follow. And uh, yeah, that was so amazing. And I know, because um, he passed away many years ago actually, uh, so he's dead now, but I know one day God will do the impossible again. And this time bring us physically back to life. And, uh, and, and I know my father, I will be able to see him again and uh, in heaven for all of eternity. And that's the future hope, right? And that's gonna be amazing. And I hope there's someone that you can think about right now that would you would like to see in heaven as well. So if you have someone today that's dead in their sins and needs God's breath of life through Jesus, pray for them today and every day and, see, and, and share with them and see what God does, right? And if, if you're not too sure about sharing, just pray for them and see what God does, okay? Maybe you'll send someone else to share. But begin with prayer and so that's the message I want to share with you today that God can do the impossible 
right? He could bring death to life, uh, uh, dead people to life, right? And so let's go into the announcements now. Uh, first, our big announcement is that we have Awana coming up uh, on September 30th. And so um, I sent out an email and uh, in the email, there's all the information about it in there, um, about registration, uh, about um, as well as what materials you may need and when we're going to start and we're going to do it through Zoom and as well as the Zoom information and all that. Um, and uh, so I want us September, 7th, uh, uh, September 30th at 7.30 p.m. to about 8.40ish p.m. And we're going to do that every Wednesday night. So uh, yeah, look into that. And uh, if, you do, if you need the email, just please email me and I'll be more than happy to send that information to you just in case you missed it. All right, uh, second announcement is the care packages. We're still giving those out. Um, and if you're not able to pick them up, just message me. Maybe I can deliver it to you. Maybe it would be good to see you from a distance. Wave, pray for you, pray for me, <laughs> right? Um, either way, it's good. Um, just let me know. Uh, as well, if you're not getting my emails, uh, number three, there's online registration. And number four, there's uh, the Apostles' Creed and Lord's Prayer. You know, some of our students have done it. And if you would like to do it, just let me know. Let your parents know, then let me know. And I'll be able to send you a copy of the Apostles' Creed and Lord's Prayer that we use. And so you can record yourself and you could be in our next service video. Okay, and then number five, uh, again, graduation is postponed to November. Not exactly sure when exactly all that's happening. But uh, for now, all the grade sixes, I should be going to grade seven, and there are grade seven now. Uh, you're staying with me, okay, until you move on to Pastor Ron. Uh, and as well as the, you know, SKs that should be in grade one, you're staying with Paulina, or should be, um, until November, so we can have a proper welcome, all right, and get to see you, hopefully in November, we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, if if uh, worship services for children will start, if this if the elder session will allow that, uh, we'll see how the numbers go, the COVID cases numbers. All right, and number six, we have our next primary event coming up September twentieth at seven p.m. And for the activity, we'll be making a lava lamp. All right, and so the materials you need. Um, Basically, right here, a plastic soda bottle with cap, vegetable and mineral oil, food coloring, and then an Alka-Seltzer tablet or Everescent tablet. If you don't know what that is, just ask your parents. But it's, it's something you can pick up anywhere, any grocery store. And optional, there's glitter, salt, and a flashlight. Okay? And so, um, yeah, that's on sept uh, September 20th at uh, 7 p.m. for any of the primary students. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a short devotion and then get into the craft together. All right. Um, all right. And I think that's all the announcements for today. So I hope you guys have a happy Sunday and we will see you next week. Bye. Uh, please join me as we close in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Just as you brought the dry bones to life, we have experienced firsthand the life you give through your son, Jesus. Uh, we thank you for saving us from our sin and being a God who is always with us. We thank you for your promises to us and may we respond in love and obedience. So we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.